one of them is what does racism mean to you or how would you define racism like how would you define racism or what does racism mean to you how do you see the impacts of racism how yeah okay so we'll start with the first question which is how does racism what does racism mean to you how would you define racism <sighs> okay so one of the best ways that I can describe racism is that it's um, people who assume another group of people as being this way or this way or this way. For example, I am First Nations. So I know that there are a lot of people who, out there who assume that I'm dirty that I don't work, that I don't try my best, that if I probably have six kids, and if I have six kids, I don't take care of them. Um, and I could go on and on and on about the, you know, like the various like assumptions that people can make. And then when people get to know me, they're like, oh, you don't have kids? You don't have a husband who may, may or may not abuse you. Like You're actually a functioning human being. That's racism. And I don't know how else to describe it as a, other than it hurts. It hurts to think that a lot of people see me and just automatically assume all these things. Actually, I was in a... Two years ago, I went to a, a staff strategic planning in in Alberta, and I had gotten in the elevator with a coworker, and we just rode up a couple floors. She got out, I got out, and it wasn't until two days later that a coworker told me, he's like, "Do you know what happened after you got off the elevator?" I'm like, "No, please tell me." Like, I was expecting like a funny story but here's where he, what he said he's like somebody asked you to push a button and he's like and you didn't hear right away and I'm like no I didn't I was like I was thinking about like that day we had gone to visit a museum and I was just thinking about everything that we had witnessed in that museum and it was profound to me so I was just lost in my head lost in my thought and I remember the guy asking a second time he's like hey could you push floor number five, maybe? And I'm like, yeah, of course. So I pressed it. So I guess after I got off the elevator, he's like, do you think that woman and her mom even understand English? And further than that, they're like, oh, those brown people. They don't, I don't think they really understand what's going on. Not only were we on First Nations land, but they were like, so on this First Nations land, they were probably about 10% of non-First Nations people on that land. And he still, to me, had the gall to say something like that because I know that he felt privileged mm. enough to say that. And... I was completely shocked. Like, I, I never, ever, ever think that people would go that far in their thinking. Anybody. First Nations people, non-First Nations people, I never, ever thought that. And I was absolutely floored. Sometimes I think that I shouldn't be. But at the same time, I'm a human being. So therefore, I, I still am floored. I can't believe that people think that way. Okay, so the next question is, how have you experienced racism? And, I mean, you can think, like, personally how you've experienced racism, but also look, you know, conceptually and societally how you have actually, you know, seen or witnessed or understand the impact of racism on our people or on Indigenous people. Either or, however, like how, like how would you, how would you say that you've experienced racism, or how has racism impacted you the most? Okay. 
Um, so in my profession, I work for the Saskatchewan Indian Cultural Centre. And currently, my title is Indigenous Knowledge Systems Researcher. And what that means is I work for the Cultural Resource Management Department. So largely, um, my responsibility is to assist in revitalizing culture and language. And I absolutely love that because I was adopted out. And for a very, very long time in my life, I always felt out of place. I didn't quite fit in at Lumsden and area because it was probably 98% white people. White folks, yeah. Um, and most of them were nice. Mm -hmm. Most of them really were. They treated me really well. But there were some people who didn't. And it always came down to calling me a dirty Indian. And I didn't understand why. I had no idea why people would treat me that way. But as I've gotten older, um, I understand now where that comes from. And it's because of the Indian residential school era. So, in everything that I do in my professional life and in my personal life, I now have to have an awareness. Because not only am I First Nations, I'm a woman, and I'm also gay. So I realized that in this country, I am not a high priority. I'm not. And that's just the way that things are. But despite that, I have a choice. I can either let that affect me or I can do something about it. So I choose to do something about it. Um, and there are three special children in my life. I have a niece and nephew and an older niece. They're 10, 11, and 20 years old. And, um, they are like my children. I've spent many years raising them all. And um, it is for definitely for their future that I do everything that I do. Because I'm already hearing comments, especially from my 10 year old niece who goes to school. She's so proud of me so proud of me and she tells her friends about me she's like oh you know like my auntie's so awesome and she likes girls and then all of them most of them are like oh well you must be gay too you're dirty you're gross because you have a gay auntie and i'm like oh she's only 10 and she's already have, having to deal with who i am and that's I can't believe you asked me to do this now, Becky. Keep it. Well, then the last one is that um, really. I, the, the point of doing this is to provide people with opportunities to do like what how do I what do I do then you know like how do I how am I the bridge the point is not to say that you know it's everybody else who has the responsibility to end racism right like lots of people will think that I don't use racial slurs nor do I think that I have negative attitudes towards people of color or indigenous people so therefore I'm not racist. However, we all have a responsibility to work towards the elimination of racial discrimination. So if, for example, you were to say that I am the bridge to ending racial discrimination in Saskatoon, dot, 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 how would you say that you could do that? Um, so for me to be the bridge, you have to have an open mind. And my most recent experience is because as I said before, I'm First Nations, I'm a woman, and I'm gay. So therefore, in my mind, and I'm sure by many people's minds, that puts me at a big disadvantage. However, 
I think that also makes me cognizant of many things. Um, like for example, just two nights ago, we had a town hall. And by we, I mean out Saskatoon put on this town hall, which was supported by the Pride Board members. Mm. And it was talking about policing and the queer and trans members of Saskatoon. And the question was, how do you feel about the police protecting you? Um, thus far in my life, I don't really trust the police at all. I've had no reason to. In all my experiences, I've never had that experience. But because I absolutely adore out Saskatoon staff, and because I adore Pride board members, I'm willing to continue discussions for constructive outcomes. That means not only are we going to have to listen to the police, but they have to listen to us. Because at the end of the day, at the end of that conversation, most people echo what I think is being who I am, I do not feel safe with the police. And until I actually do, how can they properly protect me? I don't think they can. But I'm willing to work towards that space. By doing discussions it will involve discussions within our own community to figure out how can we come to some sort of like um, united front on how we're gonna approach the police when we when we do approach the police are they gonna be receptive to all our criticisms are they I don't know I absolutely do not know but I'm willing to work towards that and it's going to be hard, and it's going to be long, and it's probably not going to be pretty. And with the police, I'm a cynic. I really am. But I'll try, and I'll do my best at least.